Om Namo Bhagavate Shivanandaya. My humble salutations at the lotus feet of our beloved Master, Sri Swami Shivananda, and our dear Puja Swami Sahajananda. My salutations and adorations to our Holy Mother Ganga. Hari Om. Ganga, the magnificent river. Gangama, the adorable, compassionate mother. Will 30 minutes do justice to my topic, the glory of Ganga? The sacred river that is about a hundred miles long, whose mercy is as vast as the Himalayas from whence she flows. What I will now present will not even equal to a drop of Ganga Jal in the vast ocean of knowledge, most of which is taken from the book Mother Ganga by Sri Swami Shivananda. People from all over the world adore the Ganga. Her very name evokes in the heart most sublime and pure feelings. Through the centuries, the sacred Ganga has housed on her bewitching and enchanting banks thousands of saints, sages, yogis, rishis, men of contemplation, and supernatural powers. The highest aspirations, piety, and ceremonies are bound up with the very name of the celestial Ganga. While every Hindu adores the Ganga, Sri Swami Shivananda's love for her was unprecedented. He clung onto a small set of rooms on the bank of the holy river for more than three decades, only because from there he could always commune with the mother, day or night. Which is Swami Sahajananda too had a great love for Ganga. Just as King Bhagiratha's penance brought Ganga to earth, Similarly, Pujiswamiji's sadhana and love for her brought Ganga to South Africa in the form of Ganga Ranis in different parts of the country. The following is a poem by Sri Swami Shivananda from the Shiva Gita. Glory to Ganga. I love Ganga and the Himalayas. Ganga is my mother divine. The Himalayas is my father divine. They inspire and guide. I take bath in Ganga. I swim in Ganga. I feed the fishes in Ganga. I wave lights to Mother Ganga. I pray to Ganga. I do salutations to Ganga. I sing the glory of Ganga. I write about the grandeur and glory of Ganga. Ganga has nourished me. Ganga has comforted me. Ganga has taught me the truth of the Upanishads. Glory to Ganga. The glory of Ganga. The scriptures and saints on Mother Ganga. Salutations and adorations to the holy Mother Ganga, Mateshwari, the beloved of Hari, the nourisher of all beings, the bestower of immortality. Ganga is the most sacred river in India. The origin of the Ganga is ascribed to celestial glory. The scriptures and saints on Mother Ganga. We read in Gurudev's book, Bliss Divine, to a Hindu, the word Ganges or Ganga has its own sacred association. Every Hindu thirsts for a dip in the Ganges and for a drop of its water at the time of death. Aspirants and mendicants build their huts on the banks of the Ganges to practice meditation and austerities. Bhishma spoke very highly of the glory of the Ganga in parting instructions to the Pandavas from his bed of arrows. In the Satya Yuga, all places were sacred. In the Treta Yuga, Pushkara was considered the most holy place. In the Dvapar Yuga, Kurukshetra was regarded as the most sacred place. In the Kali Yuga, Ganga has that glory. Devi Bhagavatam says, He who utters the name of Ganga, even from hundreds of miles afar, is freed from sins and attains 
the abode of Lord Hari. Lord Krishna says in the Gita, I am the Ganges among rivers. Ganga is known by various names as Pagirati, brought by Pagirata, Janavi, let out by Janu, etc. Sri Shankara, in his praise of Mother Ganga, accounts for her origins thus. In the beginning, Ganga occupied the vessel, Kamandalu, in which Lord Brahma performed his daily ablution. Then she flowed down, washing the feet of Lord Vishnu and, adorning the head of Lord Shiva, finally came down to the earth as the daughter of Janu. The Ganga Bath Thousands of pilgrims visit Haridwar and Rishikesh every year and take a dip in the sacred river. They have immense faith in the glory of Mother Ganga. They believe that all their sins are washed away if they take a dip in the sacred waters of Ganga. Really, they are washed off. There is no doubt about this. Even confirmed atheists and rationalists come to Haridwar for a refreshing bath in Ganga. Whenever a pious Hindu goes to take his bath, he invokes first Ganga and feels her presence in water before he takes a plunge in the river. If he lives in a place far away from the Ganga, he intensely yearns to see her some day and bless his being by bathing in the holy waters. When he is blessed to have a Ganga bath, he carries some water to his house and carefully saves it in a vessel so that he may use it for purposes of purification. The Equal Vision of Mother Ganga Mother Ganga pours out all that she has in a continuous flow to humanity. She loves all. She has equal vision. She is quite indiscriminate, a peasant or a king, a sinner or a saint, a Mohammedan or a Hindu, whoever or whatever God's creation, he derives immense benefit out of her. O oh friend, follow the lines of Mother Ganga. Be pure, be adaptable, be tolerant, be forgiving, be sweet. Pour out your love on all. Share what you have, physical, moral, mental, and spiritual, with the whole of humanity. The more you give, the more you get. Give without any selfish motive, without expecting a reward. Embrace all. Cultivate equal vision. Ganga Desera Ganga came out of the Supreme Being. She entered the feet of Lord Hari and reached Vekunta. She issued from Golok and passed through the regions of Vishnu, Brahma, Shiva, Dhruva, Chandra, Surya, Tapa, Jana, and Maha, and reached Indralok and flowed as Mandakini. From the celestial regions, Ganga was brought to the earth by the rigorous penance of Bhagiratha. Lord Shiva receives the Ganga. Again, Bhagiratha did rigorous penance for a full hundred years. It is needless to say that Lord Shiva, the protector of all his devotees, was immensely pleased with the king and readily accepted to check and control Ganga through his matted locks. With surge, fury and foam, Ganga began to descend from the celestial regions, flashes of lightning, thunder from clouds, and the incontrollable flow seemed as if a deluge was about to devour the whole world. But Lord Shiva coolly received her in his matted locks and let her drip over him. This is Ganga Saptami Day. Lessons from Mother Ganga The Ganga starts from Gangotri in the Himalayas. She encounters many obstacles on her way but she finally reaches the goal, the ocean. Similarly, the sadhaka should never give up his struggle, however insurmountable the obstacles in the path may appear to be, 
all difficulties and obstacles will be removed through the grace of the Lord if he is sincere in his yogic practices and he will reach the goal. Ganga murmurs to you that the Lord is ever pure, that his name is Om or Bhum, that you can realize by chanting Om. Himalayas whisper in your ears about the grandeur of the soul. The blue sky reminds you of Ganesham, the Lord of Brindavan. Ocean reveals to you that Brahman is infinite. Aida speaks to you that Atman is all-pervading. The flower brings a message that the Lord is the beauty of beauties. Thunder brings the message that the Lord is omnipotent. The seed talks to you that God is a source of everything. God is in everything. The world is manifestation. Nature is his shakti or power. Sun and flower are his vibhutis. Therefore, people worship nature. They adore the sun, air and fire. They attain the formless through the worship of a form. Nature is your revealed book. Wordsworth got lessons from nature. Speak with nature in silence. Be in tune with nature. Nature will silently guide you. Commune with nature's Lord. Merge in him in silence. The Ganga gives you always cool, pure water. It does not expect anything from you in return. The sun sheds its light on all without anticipating any reward. Derive lessons from them. Always give, give, give. Ask nothing in return. Expect nothing in return. Do not expect even appreciation, approbation or recognition. A rogue and a saint can drink the water of Ganga. The sun sheds its light on the wicked and the virtuous. The mango tree gives its fruits both to the caretaker and the man who cuts its branches. Develop equal vision. Samadrishti, like Ganga, the sun and the mango tree. The Eternal Ganga Shri Swami Shivananda's love for Mother Ganga. During his early days of rigorous tapas, he would get up at 4 a.m. and even during winter would enter waist deep into the ice cold waters of the Ganga. Only when the sun appeared would he climb out of the waters. This awesome tapas affected the Divine Master's body in his later life but his reverence and love for the celestial river did not diminish and continued up to his last days on earth, as will be seen from the following narratives. This incident occurred about 24th June, 1963, a few weeks before he entered into Mahasamadhi. At the lunch table, the master could not pick up the towel with his left hand when he tried, nor could he perform his usual salutations to Mother Ganga after taking his meal. On July 8th, he was wheeled to the veranda and at his bidding, the doors of the veranda opening onto the river front were thrown open, enabling him to drink his fill of the beauty of the holy Ganga to his heart's content. Ganga Darshan to him was always a spiritual feast. On July 10th, Master expressed a desire to see the Ganga from where he lay in bed. An intervening wall obstructed the view, so the direction of the bed was changed in order to enable him to view the holy Tirtha, which he loved so much, on whose banks he had lived for almost 30 years, and on whose glory he wrote a book. At 10 a.m., the Master was brought to the veranda as usual. Normally, he sat there for half an hour. But that day, he rested for just 10 minutes with a straight gaze intently fixed on the Ganga. 
On July 14th, as was the usual practice, the disciples wanted to give the master barley water or jira water, but he wanted to have Ganga water, pure and simple. This was brought. The master, who had experienced difficulty in taking the smallest quantity of solid or liquid, gulped down half a glass of Ganga water without trouble. And with that, the being that was Swami Shivananda laid aside his mortal venture. It was 11.15 p.m. Anecdote of the expensive oranges. One day, a couple of disciples had gone to the master's room to receive work instructions. Suddenly, the master turned to his personal cook and asked if there were any oranges. When the cook said that there were, he asked him to fetch them. The cook was a man of great devotion. When he was requested to bring the fruit, he was unwilling and said, They are meant for you, Swamiji, and not for anyone else. Ah, just one, just one, the master pleaded. No, Swamiji, they are very expensive and not easy to obtain at this time. We bought only a few for your use. Ah, very expensive, very rare. Yes, Swamiji, it is summer and there are not many available in the shops. Ah, terribly expensive. I see. Now the master himself went into the kitchen and brought the oranges. Hmm, they are nice oranges, even if they are very expensive. They are very good. The master peeled one and gave a few pieces to the two disciples. Then he cast some pieces into the Ganga. The fish too can have some, if they are expensive and so rare. Why not share them with the fish also? In the meantime, a few monkeys had gathered on the roof and he threw a few pieces to them also. Soon, one by one, all the oranges were finished. Ganga Ranis in South Africa the Three pools and the water fountain at the Shivananda International Cultural Center, Shivananda Nagar, La Mercy in KwaZulu-Natal, that are regularly consecrated with the holy Ganga water, vary in construction, beauty and size. With the water circulating and light from the transparent roof sheeting, Ganga Rani ripples and sparkles just like the waters of Mother Ganga. It is extremely captivating and seems to have some inner effect on all who gaze at it. No picture can captivate the beauty of the water fountains of Bhagirati. With light from the transparent roof sheeting, the waters of Bhagirati sparkle and ripple just like that of Ganga Rani. Sri Ramakrishna's Vision of Ganga Once on Ganga Dasera Day, a special day in honor of Ganga, Sri Ramakrishna asked his disciple Rakal, Mother Ganga is a living goddess, and today one should worship her. At the time in his life, Rakul did not regard Ganga as a goddess. The master, Sri Ramakrishna, knew this and told him, One day, while I was walking near the embankment of the Ganga, I had a doubt. Is Mother Ganga truly a goddess? At that moment, I heard the distinct sound of a conch shell coming from the middle of the water. Gradually, the sound came nearer and I saw a boy traveling across the water, blowing a conch and goddess following him. If anybody was overwhelmed with grief or affliction or delusion, he would tell him, go and drink a little Ganga water, you will be all right. It was amazing to find that the person would get the desired result. Once, the son of a public woman came to Dakshineshwar. The master was sleeping in his room. The, ma the man entered and touched his feet. The master at once jumped up 
as if someone had thrown fire on him. He said, Tell me frankly all the sins you committed. If you cannot, then go to the Ganga and tell them loudly. You will be freed from them. Pujiswami Sahajananda Our beloved Pujiswami Sahajananda said the following, I recounted in my book, Glory of Guru's Grace, how, when I went to our master's ashram in Rishikesh for the first time, I remained there for only two weeks. The thing that fascinated and captured my heart was the beauty and grandeur of the celestial Mother Ganga that flowed at the foot of the ashram. When I left the ashram after two weeks, I traveled to Chennai in South India. All along my trip to the south, the celestial Ganga haunted me, sometimes coming in my dreams also. I forgot my master, but would never forget Ganga. But Swamiji adds, Now, through the grace of our Divine Master, Sri Swami Shivananda and Mother Ganga, the celestial river has found its way even in our country. Pujiswamiji says that it is quite certain that in his past birth, he lived near Mother Ganga and worshipped her. Otherwise, why would he have so much attraction for her? And how would she have come to his country? And we, as devotees of Gurudev, are eternally grateful to Sri Gurudev and Puchaswamiji for bringing Ganga Mata to South Africa in the form of Ganga Ranis to all our ashrams. I can just imagine the smile on Puchaswamiji's face if we told him that we hope that we too were there on the banks of Ganga Mata with Puchaswamiji in his past birth because through his grace we are experiencing the joy of being with Ganga Mata. We saw how Gurudev, Pujaswamiji and Ganga Mata's grace worked when a few years ago, in about a week's preparation, a very successful Kumbh Mela celebration was arranged at our ashram in La Mercy. Pujaswamiji said that the previous Kumbh Mela in India drew millions of pilgrims to Ganga. There is no doubt that all the glories of Ganga sung in the Skanda Purana are true. Otherwise, how will Mother Ganga be able to attract the largest group of pilgrims in a single day? Other lessons from Mother Ganga. This short story from the Skanda Purana illustrates Mother Ganga's potency to purify even as one whose single bone merely touches her waters. The Vultures and the Ganga Once, there was a very despicable character named Vahika. He had killed a cow and even killed his own mother. One day, Vahika was killed by a tiger in the forest and his soul was promptly brought before Lord Yamaraj for final judgment. His sins were read by his secretary, Chitragupta, and... There was not even a single virtue to balance any of his sins. He was therefore condemned to reside in several hells for millions of years. Meanwhile, Vahika's body had been torn up by vultures and one vulture flew away with the bone of his foot. While in flight, another vulture tried to take the bone away and in the resulting struggle, the bone was dropped. It happened to fall in the river Ganga and, as a result, Vahika became qualified for liberation. While he was being sent off to hell, a celestial chariot arrived to take him to Vekunta, the abode of Lord Vishnu. Such is the power of Ganga to purify. And in conclusion, prayer to Ganga. Om, obeisance to Ganga identical with Shiva and the bestower of happiness. Obeisance, obeisance, obeisance to you in the form of Vishnu, obeisance to you in the form of Brahma. I bow to you in the form of Rudra, Shankari, benefactress, 
obeisance to you in the form of all gods, obeisance to medicine personified. O Ganga, be in front of me. O Ganga, stand behind me. O Ganga, be at my sides. O Ganga, let me be stationed in you. O auspicious Ganga, you are at the beginning, in the middle, and in the end. O auspicious one, present on the earth, you are everything. You alone are the original Prakriti. You are the highest absolute. O Ganga, you are the supreme soul Shiva. O auspicious one, obeisance to you. And, as Swami Shivananda reminds us, all glory unto Mother Ganga, the giver of life, light and love. Adore her with flowers of purity, love, self-restraint and equal vision. May Mother Ganga bless you all. May she help you to live on her banks and practice yoga and tapas. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. spiritual darlings. Today's lesson is on the life of our Divine Master Sri Swami Shivananda. You will see that Sri Swami Shivananda was a very special soul and he cared a lot for us. He spent his entire life serving his fellow human beings. If everybody was a little bit like our Master, the world will be a much better place. Everyone will live in perfect harmony. There will be no need for any fights or wars. There will just be peace and love. Please pay careful attention to this lesson because we will have a quiz based on all that you learn during the lesson. In typical Shivananda style, the picture on the right shows him sharing a funny story with one of his disciples, Swami Venkatesananda. There wasn't time for any sadness. Swami Shivananda was born on the 8th of September 1887 in the village of Patamade in Tamil Nadu. That's over a century ago. His father was Vengu Ayyad and his mother Parvati Amal. They were God-fearing parents and raised their son with great care. His family lineage includes the great scholar, author, poet and saint Apaya Dikshitar and this may have had an influence on Swami Shivananda's life. It's a good idea to see if you have any great scholars in your own family tree, so it's time to quiz your parents on that. 
You never know how this may influence your life. Swamiji lived every day with God constantly on his mind. His favorite motto was to start every day with God, end every day with God, live every day with God. Nothing could be easier. In this way, you will be one with God. On the day that our master was born, there was a bright star, Barani, in the sky at Patama Day. Sounds familiar? He was given the name Kuppaswami. You can see immediately that his parents had great plans for their son. They knew that he would end up a saint and hence gave him an appropriate name. There was no doubt that Kuppaswami had a huge heart. He was always eager to serve people. If his mother gave him some delicacy, he would immediately search for someone to share it with. That's something we should all do. Kuppaswami spent his student days in Dikshitar Street in Itayapuram, and this is where he attended Raja's High School. He later attended medical school in Tanjore, where he studied to become a doctor. He believed that this was the best way for him to serve the poor and the sick. Although Kuppaswami was very playful, he took his study seriously. He was an excellent student, both at school and at university. He knew he had to be the best to make a success of his life and to help other people. That's a lesson for all of us. Study hard and play hard. Apart from his studies, Kuppaswami also enjoyed sport. His favorite sport being gymnastics, which helps you maintain flexibility and to be disciplined. After medical school, Kuppaswami started a medical journal called Ambrosia to share his knowledge on health with everybody. Swami Shivananda believed that sharing is caring. He wanted to help people stay healthy and live a healthy and fulfilling life. Kuppaswami did not limit his student life to just studies and sport. He also enjoyed a bit of acting. He was so versatile that he took on the role of a lady in one of Shakespeare's plays. He played Helena in Midsummer Night's Dream. This also shows how selfless and confident he was. It's intimidating enough to just get on stage and act, but to play a different gender is even more difficult. Once he qualified as a doctor, Kuppaswami went off to practice in a place that he thought he could best serve the people. That was the rubber plantations of Malaya, serving the poor and the needy. There were very few doctors who will deliberately venture away from their homes to practice out in remote areas, in this case the rubber plantations. After 10 years in Malaya, he decided to return to India for a new chapter in his life. He definitely had a divine calling. When he returned to India, it is said that whilst his bags were being offloaded at his house, he simply left without anything and made his way to Varanasi, the abode of Lord Shiva. There was a burning thought in his mind that I must realize God now. I know this may have sounded like a selfish decision because his mother and father were waiting for him, but he knew he had to serve the rest of the world. And we are all so grateful for that, aren't you? He was initiated into sannyas almost immediately by Swami Vishwananda on the banks of the Ganges. It is unusual for a guru to initiate a disciple that he meets for the first time. Gurus will usually want you as a disciple for a while to observe you and to see whether you meet the right standards to be initiated. Pujay Swamiji was one of those gurus that had to be absolutely sure of his disciples. But Swami Vishwananda did not hesitate to initiate Kupa Swami immediately. He could see that he was a special soul and possessed all the right qualities. This is truly rare. Once initiated as Swami Shivananda, Gurudev set about building the Divine Life Trust. He concentrated on his spiritual practices as well as serving the poor and the sick 
and anyone else that needed his help. He used up all his savings to start this beautiful organization. His desire to serve was so great that he was a true inspiration to all who met or heard of him. That included our very own Pooja Swami Sahajananda, who renounced worldly life once he heard about Swami Shivananda and read his books. Swami Shivananda formed the Divine Life Society on the banks of the Ganges on the 16th of April, 1939. That's over 80 years ago. He was so intent on spreading spiritual knowledge that he traveled extensively all over India and set up many branches of the Divine Life Society. Once people found out about Swami Shivananda and his teachings, several more branches were opened around the world, including South Africa. Pretty soon, we will have our very own ashram in Gauteng. We can't wait. There are currently approximately 400 branches worldwide. Swami Shivananda was truly an embodiment of love and light and selfless service and a true inspiration to all who knew him. His teachings have inspired thousands of people around the world. He is certainly one of the great saints of our time, and we are so privileged to have had his grace. He attained Mahasamadhi in 1963, but his name and his teachings will be with us forever. Puja Swami Sahajananda or Srinivasan learnt about Swami Shivananda when he came across the book Practice of Karma Yoga by the Master in a Durban bookstore. At that stage, Srinivasan knew he wanted more out of life and was searching for a guru. After reading the book, he was sufficiently inspired and knew at once that he had found his guru and that he had to meet him. He visited Rishikesh in 1948 and met with Gurudev. Gurudev's first instruction to him then was that he should learn to type and make tea. He asked Srinivasan to open up a branch of the Divine Life Society in South Africa, but Srinivasan didn't think he was competent enough. After three letters of persuasion, Srinivasan reluctantly sent the registration fee and the Divine Life Society of South Africa was established. Gurudev initiated Srinivasan into the Holy Order of Sanyas in 1956 and gave him the name of Swami Sahajananda. Puja Swamiji has grown the Divine Life Society in South Africa by following the Master's teachings on serving the poor and the needy. We are all eternally grateful for that. Om Sanskar, Om Sanskar, Om Om Shanti, 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 Om Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Hare to all you spiritual darlings. We have come now to the exciting part of the lesson, and that is the quiz. This will tell us how much you have learned from the lesson. It's best to divide yourselves up into teams, and I suggest four teams, and give yourselves team names. This is important for the quiz. The rules of the quiz are as follows. We have multiple choice questions. So four possible answers to each question. I will ask each team a question in turn. You'll have 30 seconds to give me your answer. If your answer is correct, you'll get five points. If your answer is incorrect, the question will be handed over to the other teams. And the team that calls out its name first 
will be allowed to answer the question. And if they get it correct, they will get the five points. There will be a minimum of five questions for each team. And at the end of the round, we will tally up the score to see which team is the winner. Your teacher will record the scores and will also be able to adjudicate in the event of any close calls. That's when the team calls out their names. Are you ready? We'll start with an example just to see whether you understand exactly how it works. This is the example question. What affectionate name did Gurudev give to Puchaswami Sahajananda? Was it the African Chata Guru, Chota Guru, Happy Guru, Satguru? Do you know the answer? Let's start off with team number one. Well, the correct answer is Chota Guru. And Chota means young. Okay, that's what he thought of, Swami Sajananda. Okay, so let's start with the quiz. This is a question to team number one. Name the village where Swami Sajananda was born. Was it Ethiapuram, Rishikesh, Patamadei, or Danesia? Okay. You have 30 seconds. Correct answer is Patamadei. What is the goal of life? Is it to realize God, to eat healthy, to do asanas, or to drive a Mercedes? You can confer with the other teammates. The correct answer is to realize God. Well done. Next question. What was Swami Sivananda's boyhood name? Was it Krishna, Saraswati, Kapuswami, or Tangavel? I think carefully you want to give the correct answer to get the five points. Okay. You have enough. And the correct answer is Kapuswami. What was or what is Swami Sivananda's main teachings? Is it serve, love, give, purify, meditate? Or be good, do good? Or be kind, be compassionate? Or is it all of the above? What do you think? As I said, you can confirm with your teammates. Don't have much time. Let's go. Okay. Of course, the correct answer is all of the above. It's all of those are oh, Swami Sivananda's teachings. Next question. When was Swami Sivananda born? Was it the 14th of July 1963? Was it the 8th of September 1887? Was it the 10th of September 1887? Or was it the 31st of February 1991? Don't rush now. Think carefully. Okay, do you have an answer? So the correct answer is the 8th of September 1887 and that's the reason why we celebrate Swami Sivananda's birth date on the 8th of every month. Now, next question. Name the high school that Swami Sivananda attended. Was it Rajas High School, DLS High School, Rishikesh High School or Bryanston High? Once again, confer with your teammates. You want to give the correct answer to earn those points. All right, do you have an answer? And the correct answer is Rajas High School. Well done. And now, name the medical journal that Swami Sivananda started. Was it the Ambrosia, Humor for Health, Tonics for Life, or Vanity Fair? Once again, think carefully. No need to rush. You still have a bit of time. The correct answer is, of course, Ambrosia. Don't forget that. When did Swami Sivananda attain Mahasamadhi? 
was it in 1961 or 1932 c 1963 or d 2021 no need to rush as i said you have a bit of time, confer with your teammates, and let's get the correct answer. And the correct answer is 1963. Next question. What was the name of the bright star in the sky the day that Swami Sivananda was born? Was it Halley's Comet? Was it Venus? Was it Barani? Or was it Bharati? Any ideas? The correct answer, of course, is Barani. Barani. Don't forget that. And moving along, what was Kupaswami's favorite sport? Was it A. Boxing, B. Gymnastics, C. Rugby, or D. Motor Racing? Mm hmm. Okay. The correct answer, of course, is gymnastics. How many of you are doing gymnastics? It is a great sport. Now, who wrote Midsummer Night's Dream? The play that Swami Sivananda acted in. Was it Swami Sivananda himself? Was it Charles Dickens? Was it William Shakespeare? Or was it J.K. Rowling's? Take your time. Take your time. The answer is there. Correct answer, of course, is William Shakespeare, the great playwright. We all hold so dear. Which guru initiated Kupaswami into the holy order of a sannyasa? Was it Swami Vivekananda, Swami Vishvananda, Swami Venkatesananda, or Swami Vishnu Devananda? This is really close, so think carefully and let's have your answer. The correct answer again is Swami Vishvananda. Swami Vishvananda. Next question. What tendency did Swami Sivananda display from a very early age? Was it restlessness? Was it fearlessness? Was it speechlessness? Or was it selflessness? Are you thinking? Good. Good. I like that. The correct answer, of course, is selflessness. How many branches does the Divine Life Society have worldwide? Is it A, 40, B, 400, C, 4,000, or D, 40,000? Don't rush now. This is all really close, so think carefully. The answer was in the lesson. And the answer is B, 400. Good. On the banks of which river did Swami Sivananda establish the Divine Life Society? Was it the Ganges, or Saraswati, or C, Yamuna, or D, Umgeni? I'm sorry, I can't give you any clues. I know this is a tough one. And the correct answer is the Ganges. The mighty, mighty Ganges. Now there's a tough one. What crop is Malaya famous for? Of course, the clue was in the lesson. Was it A. Baji, B. Mealies, C. Sugarcane, or D. Rubber? And the correct answer is rubber. Remember, Swami Sivananda went to practice medicine in the rubber plantations of Malaya. And now, at which college did Kupa Swami act in Midsummer Night's Dream? Was it the ML Sultan Technical College, or B Teacher Training College, or C SPG College, or D Forest Academy College? Okay, what do your teammates say? And let's have the answer. 
Yes, the correct answer there is the SPG College. And now, Swami Sivananda said that you must start your day with A. Granola B. Grapefruit C. God D. Guava Juice What do you think? What do you think? What would Swami Sivananda have advised? The correct answer is, of course, God. Well, well done. To all you spiritual darlings, congratulations for participating in the quiz. We will now tally up the score to see who is the winner. But of course, at the end of the day, everybody's a winner. As long as you've learned something from the lesson, that's what means a lot. You need to listen carefully, always, to your lessons and make sure you understand. And if you don't, ask questions. Okay? So well done. Until the next lesson. Goodbye. Hari Om. That's it. Hari Om, dear camp participants. Thank you for tuning into our yoga camp online lessons. Please note that satsang will commence at 11 a.m. and a WhatsApp link will be sent to you shortly. Om.